Hello there, dear internet user. This video is bound to piss some people off, but fuck it, I decided to make it. So here's my 10 reasons why I think Skyrim is better than Oblivion. Let's do this. Number one, Skyrim has dragons. I rest my case. Uh, just kidding. There's a lot of people out there that think, oh, dragons are overrated or they're so passe and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, kind of, you know, when you're watching them on TV, they're passe, but when you're wandering about in the countryside, all of a sudden, you hear the music, and you look up, and there's a giant winged beast just hovering in front of you. It's about to breathe fire all over you, and you have one of two choices. Either try and run away, or try and slay the beast, and it's always an epic encounter. And not only that, when you kill them, you can absorb their soul and use it as magic against other creatures. How cool is that? When you kill a dragon, you absorb its soul, and you learn some of its power. You can push people away with your power, or you can set them on fire, or freeze them, or slow down time. It gives you mastery over time and space, some of these magical dragon shouts, and Oblivion doesn't have any of that. One point to Skyrim. Number two, perks and skills. I know a lot of people are saying, oh well, you know, they really dumbed it down in Skyrim, they got rid of all the major skills and minor skills, and now any skill can just level you up, and I'm like, yes, and that makes it better. It's just a fact. I mean, why would you want to make a character and then be bogged down with, oh, I must pick my seven major skills carefully because these are the ones that will do... No, I just want freedom, so give me the character and anything I do in the game, you know, sneak, attack with sword, use a certain type of magic, whatever you do in that game, you will get better at, at that game. Much like in Oblivion, except in Oblivion, when you level up the minor skills, it doesn't help you level up. It doesn't make you get any better. It just helps you get a little bit better at that skill. In Skyrim, all the skills help you get better overall. The perks are just simply way better as well. On Oblivion, every 25 levels of a skill, you'll get a perk, and it might be something rubbish like, oh, make your enemy stagger a little bit more, or jump on the surface of water, like that's needed. You know, you have to have an acrobatics of 100 to be able to jump on the surface of water. You can get boots that let you walk on water. Why do you need to jump on it? It's pointless. But in Skyrim, you get awesome, awesome perks. Perks like sneak attacks do six times damage if you're using a dagger. So you can, like, one-shot dragons if you have your character set up properly. And the perks in Oblivion, you barely notice. Some of them you might notice, like being able to dive out the way of attacks and stuff. But most of them, you don't even notice. You get a choice of perks in Skyrim. In Oblivion, it's just, oh, you reach level 25 with this skill, you're getting this perk. In Skyrim, you get a whole tree to play with. You're like, oh, which way should I go? I'm gonna get, I wanna make my character a little bit better with one-handed weapons, but I wanna, in what way do I wanna do that? Ah, yes, let's reduce the stamina it costs to do a heavy attack. Much better than the uh, poor, pitiful selection of perks that Oblivion offers. And there's one perk in particular that leads me to point three. Number three, decapifuckintation. In Oblivion, you can't decapitate enemies. You can't. You can kill them and they'll drop to the floor and that's cool. But you cannot just swing your sword so hard at the enemy's neck that it lops their head off. And they drop to the... It's just a headless body drops to the floor. How cool is that? I believe this is the first Elder Scrolls game that allowed you to decapitate enemies. And it just further goes to bolster my second point. That being that the perks are better in Skyrim because they are. Decapitation. Win. Number four, kill count. Oh, I'm sorry, Oblivion didn't have any of these, did it? No, of course it didn't. Skyrim had kill cams that would occasionally trigger when you kill an enemy, and then in a later update, they made it so that bows and arrows and magic could do kill cams as well. And I love the kill cams. One of the best things about Fallout, in my opinion, is going into vats and getting all the cinematic angles and looking at your character that you spent all this time creating and customizing and seeing them off the enemy in a cool and funky way. And you can't do that in Oblivion. In Skyrim, there are kill cams aplenty. And the enemy can even get these kill cam animations on you. It, it, it's a two-way street. Kill cams, always a win in my book. Number five, werewolf. You can be a werewolf. In Oblivion, uh, yeah, you know, you could be a vampire, and it was risky and it would fuck you up if you were in the sun. You can be a vampire in Skyrim, but even that's improved with the Dawnguard DLC, where you can be not just a vampire, a vampire lord, and you gain access to perk trees, something vampires didn't have in Oblivion, and they did, certainly didn't have perk trees for werewolves because you couldn't be a werewolf in Oblivion. In Skyrim, you can, and you can just feed on people to keep your bloodlust going, and you can get perks that let you summon more werewolves to fight for you. How is that not better than a game that doesn't allow you to do that? Number six, the Civil War. 
Now, I know a lot of people are sort of ambivalent with the Civil War. They're like, yeah, you know, the quests were quite good, but it never really felt like you were actually having an impact on the world. It was more like the Civil War was something that ha was happening in the background, and then occasionally you would join in to help. And while that's true, one of the most talked about aspects of Skyrim was the Civil War. And who was in the right? Everyone picked a side, whether you picked a side from the beginning or didn't choose a side until much later on or maybe you picked a side and then changed your mind later on everyone picked a side and everyone's got an opinion on who's right and who's wrong in the war and this is the best part about the civil war it's not clear cut it's not black and white it's not like fallout where you're going okay the enclave they are the bad guys you know and then the brotherhood yeah they're good guys it's much more gray than that because you think oh, on the one hand the imperial legion has come along and they're like look you know we're gonna fucking put the boot down you gotta do as we say right and then you've got the Stormcloaks that are like, no, actually, no, we, we like our freedom and our independence, we're going to fight for that. But I chose the Legion to begin with. I felt vindicated in my choice when I heard one Legion member say this as I walked past him. He goes, what the Stormcloaks like to forget is that we're what's keeping the Aldmeri Dominion out of Skyrim. And I was like, that's so fucking true. Yeah, sure, you know, the Nords can't worship Talos anymore because the High Elves say so. And all these other things that the Legion is having to enforce that the people of Skyrim in general don't like. But the point is, if it weren't for the Legion enforcing these minor impingements on freedom, the Admiral Dominion would just roll up and go, oh, by the way, you're now all slaves. So maybe you should have uh, stuck with the Legion. So without the Legion, Skyrim would just be slaves. You know, Ulfric Stormcloak himself kind of admits that maybe he shouldn't have done it and maybe he was in the wrong. So, you know, that's what I'm going to say. Number seven, Pac-Man Easter Egg. Does Oblivion have a Pac-Man Easter Egg? I rest my case. Number eight, the giant launches. Anyone that's played Skyrim for long enough to have an encounter with a giant, right? And you know you've all done this. You, the first time you saw a giant, you went, I'm gonna fucking try and have that thing. And it just capped you off, didn't it? And I bet when it capped you off, it came down on you with its club and then launched you up into space and you laughed in wild confusement because you were like, this is, that's what? That's weird, but it's kind of funny. And Bethesda were aware of this, but they said, look, okay, this is a bug, but come on, it's funny. We're just going to leave it in. And the world went, yeah, that's cool. We're fine with you leaving it in because it's funny. Does Oblivion have any giant launching bugs? I don't know, I think so. So, you know what I say about my case and resting it. Number nine, you can join the fucking Legion all the way through Oblivion. I wanted to join the Legion. You know, you do quests for people that are working in the Legion, but you never actually get to join them. And you can wear some of their armor, but that's as close as you can get to being in the Legion. You can pretend to be in the Legion. So when I started playing Skyrim, and they were like, oh, by the way, you know, we've got these two groups, the, the Stormcloaks and the uh, and the Legion. Pick one. And I was like, uh, oh, let me fucking guess. Pick one. Done. Oh, and by the way, the guy that voiced General Tullius is the guy that voiced Doc Mitchell in Fallout New Vegas. So double points for that. Number 10, Jim Cummings. If you don't know what that name means, then you don't care one jot for voice actors, which is fine, I guess. But I like to know who voices characters I like in games sometimes. And I'm aware of this guy called Jim Cummings, and he did quite a few voices in Skyrim. He's got a very recognizable voice. He even did some voices in um, in GTA 5. You know, he, get, he gets around. But he's not so much known for his video game voices as he is for his cartoon voices. This guy, Jim Cummings, right, he voiced Pete. As in Goofy's neighbor, Pete. You know Goof Fruit? You know Goofy's neighbor, Pete? Markies, and my Italian shoes! And some credit card! Ooh, ooh, wait, a, wait, what about the shirt off my back? Uh, and an I owe you and you owe me. E I E I O. But if I check here and if I check there, I'm gonna strangle you right now! And yet, they want to heap the fault on my family's good name? Ah! Pete was also, before Goof Troop, he was like the sort of general villain in the Disney universe. Jim Cummings also voiced, oh, uh, let me see, this little character called Winnie the Pooh. And coincidentally, Tigger too, as well. He voiced uh, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. And so Winnie the Pooh is in Skyrim. Is Winnie the Pooh in Oblivion? No. Do I need to say any more? So there's my 10 points of why I think Skyrim is better than Oblivion. Wait! I'm bumping it up to 11 because I absolutely have to just point out the fact that the main theme to Skyrim is like the theme tune to Oblivion, except infinitely better. Just fucking, I'm not even going to play it because, I mean, I don't own the rights to it or anything, but you know the main theme to Skyrim. I, I challenge you, I challenge you right now, after this video, watch a video of the Oblivion theme tune, and then watch a video of the Skyrim theme tune, 
And there's just simply no contest which one gets you in the mood to play an Elder Scrolls game. It's it's the Skyrim one. Case closed. Rest my case. That's it. I'm out of here. See you later. I would drop the mic, but it's expensive, so I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to walk away. Skyrim wins! <laughs>